This is Nimishosh, aka the People's Champion, coming at y'all with a loadout video reporting to you live from the Bebop. As of the last update, we actually got ships that you can walk around in. It's a little bit cramped, but it serves my purposes. Now, let's go into the bows of the ship, and before we get to the loadout, take a look around. <sighs> Say hello to Pup Pup. Can't wait till she gets older so she can come with me on missions. She's a beautiful creature. Let's take a look. Oh, who's your good pup pup? Who's your good pup pup? That's right. I love your aminos. Anyway, so let's get to the loadout part of the video. As you can see, I use Rhino Prime with the Vanguard helmet because the Vanguard helmet gives you that extra speed and that extra speed is what you need in most missions. Take a look at the loadout before we even start this the one thing i don't like about this load this update is everything's kind of tilted to the side so you can't see it as well as you used to but you get used to it after a while first we're going to talk about energy siphon i went ahead and put a former in my rhino prime so that i can have energy siphon because with this setup you need a good bit of energy the spells that i use is Iron Skin, Rhino Charge, and Rhino Stomp. I don't have Roar. Um, actually, I do have a fully leveled Roar, but I don't use Roar specifically because oops, I'm gonna pull out. specifically because when I use my Iron Skin, sometimes I swipe the wrong way and Roar pops off, and that could be very detrimental. So we're gonna go with Redirection and Vitality in my D slots. These are, you know, as you can see, defense. Um, then we have Intensify, which works with the Rhino Stomp and the Iron Skin, making the Iron Skin a lot more effective, which makes you basically in damn near invincible. It takes a lot to knock that Iron Skin off when you have a full Intensify. We have Stretch, which works with the Rhino Stomp. Um, the Rhino Stomp is basically your ultimate move it clears out enemies or whatnot i hear you pop up you chill out over there anyway sorry about that the stretch works with the with the rhino stomp and it maximizes its effective range we have flow and streamline which maximizes your power efficiency because you keep that iron skin up as much as possible and you want to make sure that you keep at least enough energy so that you can recast it just in case it does go down and we have thieves wit because you need to pick up loot you know uh loot is everything in this game and having an extra eye to pick out where the loot is where all those <clears throat> mods could be that's what this is for and i had enough mod capacity to actually put that in there instead of roar so this is basically my try hard loadout for rhino prime next we look at the boltor prime which is my favorite rifle weapon now if you look at the gay guy plays or mogamo shouts out to the gay guy plays and mogamo those guys are amazing um they use a lot of elemental mods in their weapons for generalization purposes, I usually don't. So these are the mods that I use. You have Split Chamber with, with the multi-shot, Serration. Um, it's not full just yet because it's really expensive as far as mods and the money to get that all the way up. But I do plan on getting on there all the way up eventually. Heavy Chamber, uh, extra 135% damage with minus 35 percent accuracy i have no idea how accuracy deals in this game but it doesn't seem to be a real big problem so i don't mind the minus 35 percent point strike which is your 150 percent crit chance that's going to be your yellow numbers and your red numbers when they land and vital sense to add to that crit damage to make your crit damage higher when you do land your critical hits now Another very critical mod that you want on a Boltor Prime is Fast Hands, in my opinion. 
You don't want to sit there and reload all day. And I like to rain bullets down on enemies. So, fast hands reloads your weapon really quick. Speed trigger, just like I said, I like to rain bullets on my enemies. This adds to your fire rate, so you fire a lot more bolts. And between speed trigger and split chamber, you're going to be using a lot of bullets. So, rifle mutation is a must for a bolt or front. You run out of bolts real easy and you don't want to be stuck out. I already talked about Vital Sense, and that's the Bolt or Prime. Next, I like to use the Oscalettos because, again, I like to rain bullets. Now, I didn't put very much thought into the Oscalettos because they're my sidearm and I don't use it as much, only when I actually go down. So, with that, we have the Quick Draw, which they reload quickly anyway, so the Quick Draw makes the time almost zero. Lethal Torrent with the extra fire rate and multi shot. Pistol Gamut with the extra crit chance. And Hornet Strike for the extra 140 damage. You got your Target Cracker, which adds to the crit damage with the Pistol Gambit, which is with the crit chance. You have the Ice Storm, which is the 40% magazine capacity plus 40% freeze damage for that little bit of elemental kick. And Trick Mag so you don't run out of bullets. Also, Bow Diffusion, the next thing I plan on leveling up, which is 20% multi shot. Which, just like with the Bolt Tour Prime, you get extra bullets for virtually no cost. So, let's move on to the next the Dragon Nakana. Dragon Nakana is my melee weapon that I use when things just get a little bit too close for comfort and if I feel like showing off. Got your Tranquil Cleave, which is one of the best mods for. Uh, the Dragon Akana, pressure point for the extra damage, status chance, I'm still not quite sure what the status chance does, but if I'm not mistaken, it adds to your crit chance and your elemental damage, but again, I'm not sure, I'll have to look that up. True Steel, you got your extra crit chance when added with True Punishment for 40% crit chance, you have 100% crit chance on your weapon with uh, minus 60% channeling efficiency, but since I don't channel that often, I don't mind the, the drawback. Organ Shatter, which is 90% crit damage, which adds to the crit chance, so that whenever you see those yellow numbers, it adds that extra bit of damage. Spoiled Strike, an extra 100% damage, which works with Pressure Point for, what is this, 100, 220% damage on your Dragon Nakata. You had Flurry, which is a plus 30% attack speed to negate the not minus 20 attack speed on your Spoil Strike for a net gain of 10%, which with the um, the kind of that's pretty much all you'll need. Rending Strike gets that extra bit of 60% slash damage and 80% puncture damage. You know, because why not? And my main Sentinel is the Shade. Now, a lot of people use Dead Cube and a lot of people are using the new Kubero, but I prefer Shade, mainly because I solo a lot and I do a lot of pug matches. And when that happens, you have Ghost, which draws a lot of attention off of you. I know Rhino's a, um, a tank frame, but whenever you're by yourself, being a tank isn't necessarily needed. So you add Ghost and add this little bit of invisibility to get that heat off you. You have spare parts, which adds a drop chance upon death of the sentinel. You have steel fiber. All these are mostly defensive mods. Regen, when, it, when your sentinel explodes, they'll come right back. I don't think it works though, but I keep it on there just in case. Fired up, extra overheat damage. I'm not quite sure what overheat is either, but I have that on there because it looks like it interacts with the, with the beam. Coolant Link is one of the best mods for Sentinels. It fires a little beam of cold and it freezes your enemy, making them nice and slow so that you can pay attention and murder them as soon as you see them. Revenge is what you need for your shade so that anytime something hits you, it starts firing back at it. And Guardian, it boosts your shield when your shield runs out. So, with the Rhino Prime, your first line of defense is going to be that Iron Skin then your defense mods, and then Guardian, which helps you if you just so happen to run out of shields. So you're going to be very, very, very well protected on virtually any mission. And the Sweeper, which 
I need to work on more here as well. Point blank shot, uh, disruptor, blaze, seeking force. From what I've read that crit damage and crit chance doesn't work with the sentinel weapons, but I put that on there anyway because I really don't have much much of anything else to put on there. So I just keep that on there just because I have spare um, spare points to put it. Hell's Chamber, 120% multi-shot, it's beautiful, and Shredder. Now, as you can see, I may not be 100% fully modded out just yet, but I have completed all the planets, and I can pretty much solo anything in the game with this build. Also, last but not least, the consumables. These two consumables I don't really use, but I keep that on there, it, it just nostalgia, whatever. We have the uh, energy restore because with the build that I use, I want to keep iron skin up at all times with no exceptions. So if I run out of energy, I'll pop one of these and keep it going. We have the heal restore, which if things get really, really, really bad, I can throw this down, build my health back up while I'm building up my energy to build up my uh, iron skin and I can come back renewed with no problem got the codex scanner which is pretty much standard equipment you keep that on there to analyze your codexes and especially with this new event that's out to search for enemies that you can barely see also you have your ammo which if you have a bolt or prime I suggest you get a medium team ammo restore all these you're gonna find in the dojo the blueprints for them and they're fairly cheap for 10 so get yourself an ammo restore and make sure you're always going to have ammo in that bolt tour because when you run out you're screwed and then last but not least the force specter if things get really 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 bad you want to throw one of these guys out there to help back you up these are just uh, the three stars i have access to the four stars but i haven't uh made them just yet i think i might have made one but i'm not sure actually yes i did i made two of them interesting all right and that's it with my loadout video so if you like the loadout feel free to rate comment favorite and subscribe and if you have any questions or comments or anything that i should do better on my warframe feel free to leave a comment in the comment section also check out the doobly-doo below this video if you're on the computer check out the um description box for an excellent loot crate offer just go ahead click on that 10% off a of loot crate it's great and that's about it heroes for life people's champ for life we do what it do we finish the job say hi to kuburo be good stay safe pet your kuburo mind your butter and holla back at your boy Perse. look at my kuburo now time to go save the universe you guys have a good one and stay tuned because there's a lot more coming up. Pirate <laughs>